Today's artists worked during the 1970s, 1970s. If you were to take an educated guess and think back to the artists who worked during the 1970s, hopefully you come up with the style of pop art as the major style. So his style is pop art, which means popular culture. This is this artist here in his, well, studio as well as store. What you guys probably don't realize is when an artist wants to sell something, they go through a gallery. This gallery advertises for them, puts on a show for them, finds clients that have a lot of money for them. And basically, whenever an artist sells something there, they only get 50% of that sales. And so if you see an art piece in a gallery that's worth $1,000, the artist only gets 500 of that uh, amount. And if you think about it, they might have created an art piece and it might cost them for supplies and materials anywhere from $100 to $200 for supplies and materials. So out of that $1,000, they might only make a profit of $300. And so this artist didn't want that. He didn't want the galleries taking all of his money. So he decided to just create his own store to sell his own art. And he's one of the first to do that. So he went to New York City found this old store that was closed and bought it and basically opened it up with all of his art pieces in it. Now what he was known for was these huge large everyday objects. This is a hamburger. It is huge. Uh, it's made out of basically polyester. He would use cloth. He would use these plastic fiber uh, cloths back then. Um, but he wanted to create a very regular everyday object and make you see it in a different way. So we have a hamburger here. We have this huge piece of pie. Again, these pieces are at least 10 to 15 feet long. Um, they can be anywhere from five to six feet high. The Des Moines Art Center actually has a three, it's a three-way plug. So it's something you would plug in an electrical outlet. It's a huge blue one that they actually hang from the ceiling. I don't know if it's out at the Des Moines Art Center now. Sometimes they have it in storage, but they have a huge one of his there. If anyone has ever been to Minneapolis and driven through Minneapolis, you might have seen this by the interstate. This is at the Walker Art Institute. Uh, you can see this from there, and a lot of people recognize this. You can walk around it. If anyone has ever been to Kansas City, this is kind of an icon of Kansas City, are these uh, shuttlecocks that are spread around that kind of look like they're just hanging there. Um, but very much known in Kansas City, that's by their art museum. Uh, it just has a lot of large everyday objects that are kind of here, there, and everywhere. A lot of major towns have his pieces. You may recognize something like this, which is downtown. This is the umbrella and I believe Cole's Common area. Over the last year, they've totally redone that area, but they kept this art piece. Now, you might think to yourself, okay, why is he doing large everyday objects? Seems weird. But he actually has a very much a deeper meaning for everything. Question I have for you is Des Moines is known for something around the world. It has this kind of tagline that we are known for a specific thing. I don't know if you have ever heard that the Des Moines is the insurance capital of the world. Pretty much every single insurance company in the United States has an office in Des Moines. A lot of the people who work in Des Moines work for insurance companies. And so think about this. What do insurance companies do? Insurance companies protect people. That's what they do. And so this umbrella is a symbol of protection. It protects people from rain, protects people from the bad weather. And so that's why this artist made this umbrella for Des Moines, to represent what the city was about and their main industry. This next object was pretty controversial. This is in Philadelphia. This clothespin is about five stories high. Now this was in 1976. This was the 200th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. 
And so for their 200th, city's 200th birthday, they wanted this huge sculpture to celebrate that. So they unveiled this, and people hated this. Like, they thought it was the most ugliest thing and the dumbest thing ever, and they want to take it down. Uh, it's still up today, though. Why he created this and why he chose a clothespin. We have to think of, just like Des Moines, Des Moines is known as the insurance capital of the world, what is Philadelphia's tagline or what it's known for? There is a phrase for Philadelphia. It's known as the city of brotherly love. City of brotherly love. And he chose this piece because if you look at it in a different way, you might see two people hugging and embracing. Some of you see it. Some of you think, I don't know about that. But that was his purpose. Also, if you look at the metal part, if you were to look at this side and the other part, you might be able to make out a seven and a six, and a one for 1776, to stand for that celebration of 200 years. So he very much chose specific things for a deeper meaning. And that's what I want you to write down for the most important part. He created large, everyday objects that had a deeper meaning. He created large, everyday objects that had a deeper meaning. He created large, everyday objects that had a deeper meaning. So large everyday objects that have a deeper meaning. Some of you might recognize this if you've driven downtown. This is a huge spade that is actually in front of Meredith Corporation. He created this spade. I don't know if people know this, but Meredith is a huge publication company. They create magazines. They actually have the most popular magazine in the United States, or I should say one of the most. It is Better Homes and Gardens. Most of you have probably heard of that magazine. Better Homes and Gardens is made here in Des Moines. And so the spade represents their major brand. His name, Claus Oldenburg. Claus Oldenburg. He is pop art. Hopefully you have 1970s. He created large everyday objects that represent a deeper meaning. So Claus Oldenburg. Yes, he is still working. Uh, he is quite old right now. But he's still creating. All right, so Claus Oldenburg. Here is the image that uh, we are going to show you on the opportunity. This looks like an old hamburger. So the way we like to remember it is Claus Oldenburger. 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 Claus so this is Claus. Oldenburg. Oldenburg.